As a kid watching that in the theater, was yeah. it scary? When I first saw a con come out and Fay Ray's tied to the right. thing and all that stuff, I did this bit, you know. Before that, there was Lost World that had animated dinosaurs, but it wasn't like this. A lot of people became filmmakers on account of Kong. So it's an icon, but he's kind of clunky because it was one of the first ones. And then later on, when they made Mighty Joe Young, which is here, this puppet, they made all the refinements that Kong didn't have. When they were doing Star Wars, this they borrowed this puppet. This, from here on down, is what the Tauntaun legs were made of. Ray Harryhausen did most of the animation himself. Later on he had help when they got really complicated and there was a lot of monsters to do, but 90% of it was Ray. Every Thanksgiving they used to show King Kong, Son of Kong, yeah. Mighty Joe Young. We didn't know what it us. was. But we didn't know what the technique was. Later on we found out more about Ray Harryhausen, Willis O'Brien, figured out how they made their films through Famous Monsters magazine. So we looked at some behind the scenes stills and kind of figured out how they did puppet animation. With stop motion you're physically sculpting a performance one frame at a time. These are the uh, pointer gauges, the surface gauges that that you would use to you know, locate your, your puppet in space. At a certain point in time, there was no other way of achieving the effect. I, I wasn't able to see a through line from like the stop motion I was used to seeing to what I was seeing in Star Wars, it, because every, it, everything was just so much grander and better. I, it didn't make sense to me that that was also stop motion. To me, he has the standout performance of all time. The dragon coming down that corridor mm -hmm. of the cave, and yeah. a combination of animation with go motion where he made that puppet move and blur. Essentially what it was, was a computerized rod puppet. For this show, the, the motion control devices were these things that you just had to move in like real time, like really slowly. Yeah, robots are a little bit easier. Still you have to find the character of, of the thing. That, that's the you know, primary intention is to, you know, he gets to this precipice and you play the gag of you know, his foot going out. Eh, 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 eh. Uh, I don't know what it was. Uh, ah, hell. Boom. It was a little bit different working with George Lucas or Steven Spielberg, who are a little, little bit more like Disney. For Howard the Duck, I designed this creature that I was trying to make like very Lovecraftian. And George was like, he doesn't have a face. Uh, yeah, that's what makes it scary. Yeah, but it's not a character if it didn't have a face. It's like, okay. I think the last one that Phil did was RoboCop 2, mm -hmm. and that's an amazing traditional you know, yeah. piece of stop motion compositing. Uh, yeah, it would have been really interesting to see what the, the Phil Tippett Jurassic Park would have been. He never got as far as doing any good motion for Jurassic. You know, the die was cast long before that. I mean, I was well on the way working with Bill Tondro and building some new go motion things. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've got like designs for the, we were gonna build really big puppets, but didn't happen. The computer revolution hit. If you look at the history of stop motion, you will see it used for all different kinds of uh, stories, but it does tend to flourish at the extremes. The design process f for Mad God is grab that, grab this, put this here. I started making this thing 20 years ago and shot it on film got to about six minutes of footage. Four or five years ago, the guys were looking over my shoulder and going like, what is that? And so they volunteered to, you know, well, let's let us do some shots for it. And then the thing, it just kind of grew. You know, taking something like this to a studio. It, it would never happen. You would never get to first base. You kind of find your own way. And every stop motion animator just has their own style and their own process. We castle you have here in Burbank. Oh, thanks. It's a lot better than our other castle we had. <laughs> I've so, had so many shitty castles. This is actually a nice one. Starburns is made up of four guys, Dan, myself, and Joe and James. When I first joined up with, uh, with Joe, the reason I did it was because he had done stop motion. I was a huge stop motion fan since I was a kid. I was in a band called Green Jello a million years ago. Oh, okay. And we did the Three Little Pigs video yeah, yeah, yeah. with Fred Stir. Which two videos did you work on? Uh, I worked on Sober and Prison Sex, the early 90s when it was tough to sell a stop motion anything because it was all on camera and you had to like, process film and it was really expensive. Here we are, you know, however many years later and we're able to do this at a, at a price point that people can afford. Why was it important to you to have a stop motion Christmas episode of Community? Stop motion and Christmas go together in my childhood. It sort of captures that, I guess it's, it's moving toys. It's, that was stop motion at its peak efficacy. The thing about animation is you have to know well in advance that you're gonna do it. You can't right. just make it up the week before. When we were first starting the studio, and he wanted to do this Christmas special because one of the execs said, hey, you should do some animation. It's like mid-July. When would you need a script? And I'm like, well, when's it gonna air? And he said, first week of December. And I'm like, 
Yeah, Good God. Yeah. We, we need a script like now. And Dino wrote the script in three days. My name is on the episode but it was mostly Dan sitting there writing and me going, yeah, that, that sounds good. They did a table read, but we didn't have a studio, we didn't have a building, we didn't have cameras. So the company was basically born out of necessity, but you know, how has it grown since then? We were thinking of like, what else can we start working on? How about features? And then... And Tina goes, yeah. you should call my friend Charlie Kaufman. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Today we're gonna be making a puppet of Scott, so I'm gonna take some reference photos and try and uh, you know get a more realistic sculpt for the puppet. So we use a steel wire for the fingers, so they're a little bit lighter than the rest of the body, and that's all made out of aluminum wire. Mm -hmm. So they're working on making armatures, and then Megan here is making um, the mouse, so cutting out the mouths that you actually stick on to make the puppet talk after the fact. Generally, a lot of our armatures that are main characters are ball and socket, and then a lot of the background characters are made out of the aluminum wire. These animators are amazing. They're all on their little stages. We have like 12 to 15 little stages. They're all curtained off with black curtains. And, that was, um, took a walk through and saw some, some people working there. These little kind of almost like womb-like environments. Yeah, when I first started doing Moral Oral, I, uh, I walked in on an animator without announcing it because it was my show and I was directing it and I could do that uh -huh. and she screamed like I walked in on her taking a shower or something <laughs> and I learned instantly you're not supposed to just walk in right. on someone who's you know, working like that. You cannot computer generate these sort of pops and clicks of the LP that is stop motion. There is something being carried through from the from the soul of this uh, uh, craftsmen through their fingertips to the, them having to move this doll. Something is getting transferred. It's definitely the process of working with things. Again, you know, things, you know, talk to you and create a dialogue and, and help you find what it is you're looking for, even if you don't know. No matter how real CG tries to be, it's always fake. Right. And no matter how fake these puppets might look, they're real. They are physically, tangibly real. And I think people kind of sense that. Stop motion has been around for a long time and has evolved through it as cameras have evolved. It's gonna continue as long as we have ways of capturing the images, we're gonna have stop motion. When we're little kids, the idea of toys coming to life is kind of magic. It's great. Hey, look, my toys are coming to life. But as an adult, you think those toys are coming to life. Suddenly it's a little scarier and a little creepier. They're just things. They're just things. Next week on Bloodworks. <laughs> <laughs>